Dean Chatwin's Traces, art installation for Tasmania's 10 Days on the Island, inspired this video. Sixty-two metres long, reputedly from 6,000 trees, in including ebony and mahogany, she was very elaborately decorated and carried 126 guns. She was to be the pride of the British Navy. Launched in 1814 at the Woolwich Dockyard south of London, she was never completed and laid up at Portsmouth. Why? The age of iron and steam had arrived. Forty years later, work recommenced for service in the Crimean War. But that war ended before much work was done. In 1860, that's 46 years after the launch and without her seeing any action, she was cut down to two decks, lengthened and fitted with a steam engine driving a single screw. 46 guns remained. In 1868, she was sent to Victoria as a training ship in Port Phillip Bay for its local naval volunteers. Following the fears of Russian invasion of the 1870s, in 1881 she was cut down again to a single deck, two masts were removed and arm armaments modified to be a fighting ship for the Victorian Navy. There were no naval actions. In 1891, her boilers were removed at Williamstown and auctioned off and she was towed to Sydney. Four years later, she suffered more reductions to become a coal lighter. That is, a floating coal storage bin for steamers to refuel from. In 1908, towed from Sydney to Beauty Point in northern Tasmania as a coal hulk. In 1915, she was towed again to Hobart for further five years as a coal hulk and in 1920 auctioned off for £500 and broken up over the next few years here at Shag Bay. Uh, there's a steering wheel at Cerberus with several of the big guns on show. The Nelson figurehead is at the Australian Maritime Museum. But here at Shag Bay, the final resting place in 2017, only Dean Chatwin's traces of the mighty Nelson can be seen.